Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. In this video we're looking at solving some simple hyperbolic equations. And these are just going to be ones with shine, cosh and than. We're not going to use any identities. We haven't looked at any identities yet. We're just going to be using basically, you know, shine x equals blah, blah, blah. Cosh x equals blah, blah, blah. Than x equals blah, blah, blah. Solving those using the inverse functions. They're going to be simple ones. In the future, we'll do some more complicated ones. So let's recall that shine x, uh, cosh x and than x all have those definitions as we can see down there and r shine r cosh and r than have these definitions right here these are the definitions of the inverse hyperbolic functions we're going to need to use the inverse hyperbolic functions today okay so let's have a look at uh, some questions we're going to do three questions today looking at solving some hyperbolic equations okay so the first one we want to solve shine x equals three quarters in other words what value for x satisfies shine x equals three quarters i wonder what that will be well the way that you do this is exactly like how you would solve the corresponding trigonometric equation so for example if we had let's say instead sine x equals three over four how would we solve this well we would take inverse sine on both sides and that we would get x equals inverse sine of 3 over 4, yeah? If it was sine x equals 3 over 4, which it's not. But you do this in the exact same way, okay? We want to get x on its own. We want to make x the subject. So the way that we do this is we take our shine x equals 3 over 4. We take this equation, shine x equals 3 over 4. We inverse shine both sides. x equals r shine of three over four, yeah? Now you could leave it like that if you wanted to, or you could actually write it down in a much nicer way by just using the definition of R shine. So using the definition of R shine, because we know that R shine of X is identical to the natural log of X plus the square root of X squared plus one. Yeah, we know that, that that's true. Therefore, R shine of 3 over 4 is just equal to substituting x for 3 over 4 um, or, or 3 over 4 for x rather we get the natural log of 3 over 4 plus the square root 3 over 4 squared plus 1 like this and we can do some simplifying here natural log 3 over 4 plus the square root of 3 over 4 squared is going to be 9 over 16. Let's write the number 1 as 16 divided by 16. So then they can have the same denominator. We'll just do that in one step. This is then equal to the natural log of 3 over 4 plus the square root of 9 over 16 plus 16 over 16 is 25 over 16. And that's equal to the natural log of 3 over 4 plus the square root of 25 over 16 is the square root of 25 over the square root of 16, which is going to be 5 over 4. This is very nice because this is just equal to the natural log of 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4, which is the natural log of 8 over 4, which is the natural log of 2, which is our answer. So therefore, we've solved the equation shine x equals 3 over 4. If x equals the natural log of 2, we get 3 over 4. So the answer is x equals the natural log of 2. Okay, so if we use the natural log of 2, we end up getting 3 over 4. So the answer is the natural log of 3 over, uh, of, of 2, the natural log of 2. Okay, next one, we're going to solve the equation than x equals a half. We do the same thing. So taking the inverse than of both sides, we get x equals r than, oh, r than of a half. We can recall that uh, the uh, inverse function of than, r than, r than of a half is actually equal to the of one half times the natural log of one plus a half over one minus a half. This is just using the definition of r than. So we're just replacing all of the x's with halves. This is equal to a half, the natural log of one plus a half is three halves and one minus a half is a half. So this is equal to one half times the natural log of three halves over one half. We can multiply the numerator and denominator of this big fraction by two, 
and we get 3 over 1, so this is 1 half the natural log of 3, which if you want to, you can write as the natural log of the square root of 3 by bringing the power up here, because it's a logarithm, you can use that power rule, but it's fine to also write it as the uh, natural log of 3 over 2, or half the natural log of 3, so x is half the natural log of 3 for the equation fan x equals a half, so that's the answer there. It's a half the natural log of 3, or the natural log of root 3, they're the same. All right, and finally, we've got one more uh, question here, cosh x equals root 5. So with cosh, and this is not something that you need to worry about with shine or fan, but with cosh, you do need to be a little bit careful with your answers. We're going to look at why you need to be careful in just a second, but we are, for now at least, going to do the normal method for solving these things. So x equals uh, the inverse fan, or inverse cosh, uh, rather, so r cosh of root 5 which means that x is equal to, using the definition of r cosh, the natural log of root 5 plus the square root of root 5 squared minus 1, which is equal to the natural log of root 5 plus the square root of 5 minus 1, which is equal to the natural log of root 5 plus, well, the square root of 5 minus 1 is the square root of 4, which is 2. And then this is then equal to the natural log of, and I'll just swap the orders around, so 2 plus root 5. Either one is okay. So that's the main solution. But again, this is something that you need to worry about with cosh, but not with the others. Because cosh is symmetrical about the y-axis. So the graph, remember, of cosh looks something like this. So we have said that which value for x satisfies cosh x equals root 5. This graph, though, is cosh. So let's say that root 5 is somewhere like this, yeah? Which value for x gives you a height of root 5? Well, clearly, there are two values that do this, right? There's two intersections here. There's one value here, one value here. What we have found is one of them, the natural log of 2 plus root 5. The other solution to this equation, though, is because this is a symmetrical graph, it's minus the natural log of 2 plus root 5. They're both solutions. So it's not that it's not that uh, strange to see this sort of thing happening because you can get it sometimes in uh, in trigonometry. You can end up having to sort of get other solutions out. It's not just the principal ones. But yes, for cost, you do need to be careful because you can also end up getting situations like this. So normally you get two values for cost when you're solving equations. So that's all, guys. In the future, we'll look at some more complicated equations and, and lots of other things related to hyperbolic functions. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.